If there were ever a personification of the awkward position Egyptology holds among the humanities, it would be William Matthew Flinders Petrie, whom we nowadays tend to simply call Flinders Petrie. His contributions to the field are unquestionable and have been extremely valuable. More than that, Petrie incepted new archaeological practices, including the alarmingly new idea that archaeologists should catalogue all of their findings, however insignificant they may seem upon discovery. Yet he was a Victorian, and this is borne out in his morality. I'd like to address that first so I can't be accused of viewing the man's accomplishments through rose-tinted glass. Flinders Petrie was a eugenicist, and espoused deeply racist views about human intelligence. Indeed, part of his legacy is a theory, now no longer anywhere near mainstream, that while the ancient Egyptians were indeed for the most part of mixed African and Asian heritage, their religion, social structure and accomplishments were to be credited to a more intelligent dynastic race who likely hailed from Mesopotamia and may also have been the ancestors of later Europeans. I shouldn't need to say in 2021 that models of intelligence which include racial differences ought not to be taken any more seriously than the idea that the Earth is flat, but here we are. Actually, I wouldn't necessarily be shocked to find those two beliefs in many of the same people. Moving on. I don't think Petrie's views were remarkable for the time, not that this excuses him having them, but the scientific community in Europe in the 19th and early 20th centuries was quite firmly infested with eugenicist thought, including the idea that different races may even be different subspecies of human. Right, I think I've demonstrated I'm not idolising Petrie, let's talk about why he's a famous Egyptologist, even today. I call him an Egyptologist, and he was, but only really because the word Egyptologist has so many different meanings. His most significant contributions are probably as an archaeologist in general. He's widely credited with the invention of a technique called contextual seriation, a painstaking method whereby different samples of the same type of object are placed in rough chronological order for the purpose of creating more accurate timelines where written records are absent. The method has limitations, for instance it works best when something at pottery, for instance, goes through discrete aesthetic stages over time and that no fashions uh, significantly repeat. We all know this is untrue for many everyday objects and also that sometimes a thing varies locally or for reasons other than time passing and fashions changing. Look at kitchen knives, for example, or everyday cutlery. But Petrie introduced a very important idea to Egyptology and perhaps to archaeology in general. No find is too insignificant. He believed that when excavating, every inch of soil should be sifted for signs of human activity. Granted, most of us aren't likely to be excited by fragments of pottery, but even they are a connection to the past. Petrie catalogued everything he discovered, which not only meant he could study his findings more thoroughly, but that future archaeologists could understand and take up his work. Part of his painstaking nature reflected itself in how he treated the workers who dug his sites. While it was customary to have intermediaries to supervise the dig, Petrie preferred to supervise directly. That way, he could make sure that the project was not completed with enough haste to cause damage to the site or any findings. Combined with his tendency to make note of even findings other archaeologists would overlook, this gives Petrie a considerable impact, if measured by discovered artefacts alone, on the world of Egyptology. Though not formally educated, he was given a professorship at University College London, bequeathed to him by his friend and fellow Egyptologist Amelia Edwards. The professorship continues to exist to this day. He didn't spend much time in London, as his later life was taken up on digs in both Egypt and Palestine, where he would later retire and live out his days. Today, artefacts unearthed by Petrie-led projects are found all across the globe, making him one of the most prolific uh, archaeologists of his time. In London, the Petrie Museum of Egyptian archaeology continues to bear his name. Uh, don't let its humble appearance, relative to the British Museum anyway, fool you. Its collection is anything but humble, and includes some of the oldest Egyptian artefacts discovered, including 7,000-year-old pieces of linen, medical papyri, and a 4,000-year-old architectural plan. Recently, the museum has been working on up-to-date translations of its papyri so that they can reach a wider audience. Petrie's gifted mind, controversial ideas aside, put itself to the task of improving the effectiveness of archaeology as a historical method, and introducing the idea that archaeologists have a responsibility to the landscape and artefacts they're unearthing. His career represents a turning point, and thanks to his determination to proceed carefully, that is now the default behaviour of most archaeologists. Would taking a careless shovel to the earth have revealed something as fragile as linen older than Stonehenge? 
I'm not big on the idea of cancelling historical figures. A cancellation in the real world serves a purpose. It robs a harmful person of their platform, and thus limits how much harm they can do. Petrie's dead, and his legacy is pretty secure, but we should look back on it, on everything about our past, with honesty. Petrie had views that today would be intolerable to all morally upright sensibilities, and he was responsible for what amounts to an awful lot of looting in his quest to learn more about ancient Egypt. But, as I hinted when discussing the problematic legacy of the Rosetta Stone, sometimes we have to look past injustices in the eye, and recognise that although we would do things very differently now, we can still acknowledge their usefulness. Petrie was a racist, whose impact on the Egypt of his own time can't really be classified as beneficial, but whose work has helped to strengthen our connection to Egypt's past, and in fact not only Egypt's, because we use kinder archaeological methods to uncover ancient secrets the world over. These two things don't make each other untrue, and we're allowed to feel awkward about it. I certainly do. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Petrie's career was far longer and more impactful, for good and bad, than this short video gives him credit for and I completely and deliberately neglected to go into some of his most famous discoveries, many of which deserve videos of their own. The problematic but useful geniuses that preserve my name for all time are my backers on patreon.com slash armchairegypt. You too can join this exalted company and become a founding member of this elite intrepid crew. Until next time, my fellow armchair Egyptologists, life, prosperity, and health to you all. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the YouTube demons think you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel with me, go to patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.